G'day everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about flashpoint, flame point and auto ignition temperature. Now flashpoint and flame point could easily be mistaken for one another, but there are some specific differences between the two. So we're going to start off by having a look at flashpoint. Now a definition for flashpoint is the lowest temperature at which a flammable liquid will form a combustible concentration of gas. And for our experiment today, we're going to use kerosene. Now, the reason why we're using kerosene is because it has a flash point that varies between 37 and 65 degrees Celsius, depending on the grade of kerosene that you're actually using. Now, this is particularly useful for our experiment because it means we can easily reach temperatures that are below our flash point so that we can demonstrate where the flash point actually lies. And it also has an auto ignition temperature of 220 degrees centigrade. So this is also reasonably easy to demonstrate. Now, firstly, we're gonna be starting with some kerosene at about 35 degrees centigrade. And what you can see is when we add the flame to the kerosene, we don't see an ignition. And this is because the kerosene isn't actually letting off enough flammable vapors to actually sustain a flame, which means we therefore haven't reached our flash point. Whereas if we heat our kerosene up and we've reached 62 degrees where this grade of kerosene just happens to have its flash point, you can see that there is actually a flammable vapor present above the surface of the kerosene. Now, this is called flash point because this flame cannot sustain itself. We don't have enough flammable vapors being created so that the fire can continue to burn. So all we see is a flame will flash across the surface of our fuel, which is the kerosene, and then it will go out. This is different to flame point, which can be defined as the lowest temperature at which a fire will keep burning after the ignition source has been removed. So this means that the kerosene has actually reached a temperature in which it's actually emitting enough flammable vapor so that the fire can then sustain itself and continue to burn after the ignition source has been pulled away. And interestingly, in the case of kerosene, this is only a few degrees above where the flash point is. So you'll see here we're at 65 degrees, and when we add our flame to the kerosene, what you can see is the flame quickly burns across the surface of the fuels, but the flame also sustains itself, and we actually get continued burning even after that piloted ignition has been removed. And this is what we mean by flame point, because once we add that piloted ignition to the fuel source, then the fire will continue to burn. And obviously, if we continue to heat our fuels well past 65 degrees, we're actually going to start seeing a vapor cloud. And that is very flammable because it's a mixture of the air that's around the fuel and the fuel source. And therefore, it's likely for us to be within our flammability range. Now, this experiment got me thinking and I started to wonder whether we could actually apply flashpoint to solid fuels as well, because it's essentially a very similar process going on. Now, after quite a lot of trial and error, as you can see, I did actually manage to get our fuel source, which is just some plywood, to reach its flash point. But as you can see, it's only a very small flame, but at the very least, it's just a proof of concept that in fact, our flash point can be applied to solids as well as liquids. Now, after conducting this experiment, I did a little research to see if I could confirm the results that I was getting in the experiment. And I managed to find a quote in one of my reference books that says the phenomena of flash point and fire point can be observed with solids under conditions of surface heating. So this just goes to show that flash point and fire point aren't just exclusive to flammable liquids. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is auto ignition temperature. And as we discussed earlier for kerosene, that's around about 220 degrees centigrade. Now, all I'm doing is heating up some steel so it's glowing red hot. And then I just add a small amount of kerosene to it. And you can see very quickly that kerosene heats up to its auto ignition temperature. And essentially what's happening is the kerosene is heating up. It's producing these flammable vapors, which are the same ones that we see in our flash point and flame point. But then the kerosene can be heated further beyond that point until such a stage that the flammable vapors can simply catch on fire just because of the actual heat that they're being exposed to. So there is no piloted ignition, it's just they're simply reaching such a heat where there is enough of that chemical reaction to allow the fire to simply come into being. Now the same thing can be applied to solid fuels. And you can see here that I've positioned a piece of chipboard onto our very hot piece of steel and it quickly begins to heat up and pyrolyze. And as it continues to heat, these gases are getting hotter and hotter until they reach their auto ignition temperature. 
at which point we have a flammable atmosphere because that we have our pyrolysis gases and we have the oxygen from the air around it and once we have enough heat then the fire can come into being which is what we know as an auto ignition temperature and it's essentially just combining the three sides of our fire triangle being heat, fuel and oxygen to get our chemical reaction. Now for a really good example of our solid fuels going through the stages of starting to pyrolyze and then reaching an auto ignition temperature, we can actually look at structure fires. And I've covered some of this when we were talking about flashover, because essentially that's what's happening inside a structure fire. We can see here we have a fire burning on the left hand side of the screen, and we have our couch on the right hand side, and slowly but surely that couch is being exposed to more and more heat, and it begins to break down. Now we know that that process is the pyrolysis process and that's going to start to emit more and more flammable vapors as it breaks down further and further. But as it breaks down it's also getting hotter and hotter which means it's getting closer to its auto ignition temperature. And finally if it reaches that auto ignition temperature what we'll see is that couch will simply burst into flames even though there hasn't been a piloted ignition from the initial fire burning on the left hand side of the screen. And there we go, we've seen that the couch has finally reached its auto ignition temperature. And in fact, almost the entire couch was engulfed in flames within a split second. And this is because the entire couch was actually pyrolyzing and releasing these flammable vapors. So it only took a small part of the couch to reach its auto ignition temperature for then the rest of the couch to be ignited. It was just waiting for that final heat source to ignite the rest of the flammable vapors. All right, so now we've seen that flashpoint is where there are enough flammable vapors being created to allow a flame to flick across our fuel bed. However, there aren't enough vapors being released to actually sustain the flame, so it simply goes out. Whereas in flame point, the amount of flammable vapors being created are enough to sustain that flame. So once it actually flicks across the flame bed, it can actually sustain that flame. Now with the auto ignition temperature, what we're seeing is those flammable vapors are being heated to the point where they can simply burst into flames without a piloted ignition, which is the auto ignition temperature. But that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching and um, yeah, catch you in the next one. See ya.